Everyone, thank you so much for joining. I'm so happy that we're having this webinar tonight. My name is Frances Queller. I'm the director of Queller Prep um, Tutoring. And Alyssa, I really want to thank you. Alyssa is a tutor, a former tutor. You're a full-time teacher now, right? Alyssa is a full time teacher. So it's really an honor that you're doing this. Alyssa, Alyssa, I just want to reiterate, thank you for having a full-time job, for contributing to society, for being an educator. And I sincerely, sincerely want to take a moment to thank you for doing this webinar because you don't have to do this. And I just want to share to everyone who's in the group right now, you don't have to do this. You're doing this from your heart. And I really, really want to just say thank you. This is your special moment to share with the kids what Posse Scholarship is. It really means a lot to everyone. Um, and that's it. I'm sorry that we did have a few minutes of a delayed start. Those of you who are in the meeting, just please let your friends know that we started a little bit late um, just because I had another event at seven and I'm overlapping. So I apologize for that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And we are all set and ready to go. Okay, go ahead, Alyssa. Without further ado, go right ahead. Thank you so much, Francis, for that lovely introduction. I'm so happy to be here with all of you today. Um, as Francis mentioned, I am currently a teacher. I actually teach at the Metropolitan Expeditionary Learning School over on Metropolitan Avenue, but I'm really here today to talk about what Posse is, why I'm super passionate about it, and just to go through and be able to share my knowledge and, and answer any questions you may have tonight is really my goal. So to share out what our agenda is going to be today, I'm gonna start off with just a brief introduction about myself and share some information about me so you can get to know me a little bit more. I'll explain what Posse even is. We're all here to talk about Posse and it's very possible a lot of us in this room may not even know what that means. So I'll be happy to break that down, explain what the opportunity is like and highlight a little bit on what makes Posse so special and so amazing. Then I'll step into the DAP slash interview process. Um, I'll explain what that means at that point in time, but it's just an acronym that basically means an interview process. And I'll give share some of my tips and advice. I am a former Posse scholar. I went through the whole process myself. I attended a Posse partnership school and it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. And I'm more than excited to share just my experience and some advice that I can pass along. And then finally, we'll end our session today with a Q&A where you can share your questions, comments into the chat and I'll highlight some and we can answer any remaining questions you have before we send you off for the evening. All right. So a little bit about me, this is well, a little bit or a lot of bit about me just to summarize who I am and how I ended up in this front of the screen today talking to you. Um, like I mentioned, I am a former Posse scholar. I graduated cum laude as a member of the Pi Sigma Alpha Political Science Honor Society from Wheaton College, which is one of Posse's partnership schools. So I attended school in Massachusetts. I used my Posse leadership skills to become really involved on campus, which is a big part about what Posse is about, which I'll get into. I was involved in student government. I was the vice president of my graduating class. I was the communications and marketing chair for the alumni association. I was an intergroup dialogue facilitator for the Marshall Center for Intercultural Learning, um, which was essentially the intercultural learning space on campus. During my junior year in college, I studied abroad. I took the opportunity that was granted through my partner, my Posse Partnership School to go to Copenhagen, which is in Denmark. And I took the time to travel around. I was able to travel around Europe, studying gender studies and experiencing all different types of cultures, which really molded me to not only use my Posse ship skills in the real world, but allowed me to eventually become the educator I am today. Um, I also did study in the winter of 2020 in South Africa. I specialized in global studies out there. And while I was in college, I interned at Harlem Village Academy as a school operations intern, which some of you may be familiar with Harlem Village Academy. It is a charter school based in multiple locations throughout um, Manhattan and Harlem. So I was also a Penguin Random House as an editorial intern during my time in college. And my last semester, I also worked for the New York City Council campaign where I petitioned actually in Forest Hills along Austin Street and did a lot of community outreach. 
But before all that happened during my college years, during my time as a Posse Scholar, I was, a, I went to Forest Hills High School. I was a student at Forest Hills High School where I was really involved there as well. I really loved attending the school and spending my time there. When I was in high school, I was the captain of the softball team. I was in the Academy of Public Service program. And I actually was in a couple of AP classes. I got, I took AP Psychology, AP English, College Now Public Speaking with Queens College, which I'm sure are all courses that you are all probably very familiar with. Um, and all of those experience and getting into like that college mindset earlier in high school really inspired my positive experiences with the Posse Foundation. Laying that groundwork in high school, laying that groundwork in Forest Hills allowed me to develop that passion for college readiness and to seek out opportunities like the Posse Scholarship, which is what I'll be talking to you all about today. Um, with all of that being said, as Francis mentioned at the very beginning of our webinar today, I have decided to pursue a career in education. I, following my graduation from a Posse school, I accepted, um, I recently accepted into the New York City Department of Education Fellowship, where I am teaching special education now full-time while pursuing my master's degree in special education, grades seven through 12 and grades five through nine. Basically, all of that to say is that it's been a long journey to get to you in front of you today, but it could have never happened and could have never, I would have never became the person I am today without Posse and all they have to offer. So I'm super excited to get into that with you all. And I am just going to jump right into it and keep an eye on the chat, making sure we're all good. All right. And we're going to move forward here. So getting into the nitty gritty, what is Posse? So the Posse Foundation identifies, recruits, and trains individuals with extraordinary leadership potential. The Posse Scholars receive a full tuition leadership scholarship from the Posse's partner schools and universities. So Posse is essentially a, it's a foundation, a scholarship program that connects amazing leaders in New York City public schools and public organizations across the city and connects them with private in universities across the, across the country and works with those universities in partnership to send these amazing leaders to schools at a full tuition coverage. Um, I will say as we're starting out, Posse is a full tuition leadership scholarship. So most schools, you will still have to pay a room and board, but most Posse scholars like myself seek out independent scholarship opportunities to cover those costs. So the ultimate reward is the full tuition leadership scholarship. And to, in this world, day and age, graduate debt-free, which is an amazing opportunity to do, especially in the world that we're living in today. So Posse was built on this quote that I have above here, highlighted in bright orange, um, which is, I never would have dropped out of college if I had my Posse with me. Now, this organization, Posse, was founded in 1989 because of a student that said this quote. The student inspired the Posse Foundation creator, which was Deborah, to create a foundation that would create a supportive environment for inner city kids, New York City kids, to go out into private institutions and enter the world of adulthood to become leaders of the next generation. A student came to Deborah at the time in 1989, had dropped out of college because they felt like they weren't being supported at mostly PWI, which is predominantly white institutions, by the people that were there. They felt that there wasn't friends or people they could rely on. There weren't networking opportunities that were presented to them in the same way that they were being presented to others. And so unfortunately that person dropped out and it inspired Deborah back in 1989 to begin this foundation to help students, help inner city kids feel that concept of connection and feel that they had the similar opportunities, if not the same opportunities on college campuses across New York, and across, not New York City, across the country. Um, and it's grown to so much more than it was at the time and it's impacted 
thousands of students' lives. And this over here in the image on the right is actually a picture of a posse that attended my university. Um, this is not my personal posse. This was like my the posse above me. And we really built a community on the campus. And as you see, so many accomplished young scholars graduating, smiling, and having that support system that through those four years and beyond, you will have to help guide you along the way and help prepare you for success. Um, and the beautiful thing about Posse is it's not just the 10 people that you're with, as you see in this photo, but you will have mentors and you also have your bigger Posse community on campus to guide you along the way and to help you out while you're on a campus. So. Okay. The goal of Posse, I've touched upon this. What, what does the universities have to gain about Posse? What do you get to gain about Posse? What is the whole purpose behind it? So the goal of Posse is to expand the pool for top colleges and universities to recruit outstanding young leaders from diverse backgrounds. Now, the purpose of Posse, the benefit, the reason why colleges partner with the Posse Foundation is to essentially get amazing students to, to go across their campuses and make change. So the schools benefit by getting all these amazing scholars and getting all these amazing people to come onto their campus, inspire change, and support one another along the way. So the schools partner with Posse and to to help these inter institutions build a more interactive campus environment so they can become welcoming from people of all backgrounds. So the intention is that the Posse scholars that come onto these campuses not only support each other, but they bring new ideas to the campus and they inspire change on places that historically have not, maybe have not seen as much change. Um, to ensure that, scholar, that Posse scholars persist in their academic studies as well and graduate so they can work on leadership opportunities in the workforce. Posse sets you up to make sure not only that you achieve academic success and graduate, but that you achieve leadership positions outside of graduation. So when you are, go through your four years with your Posse, you feel supported, you're beginning to make change on those campuses, you're setting in stone amazing opportunities for people that will follow you, but then also you're supported when you leave and are able to pursue leadership opportunities in the workforce beyond college. Because college is really just a tool to get you to where you really wanna be. And Posse is no different. Posse helps you throughout that whole process, even far long after you've graduated. And I'll get very much into detail and break it down as we move forward today. But that is the goal of Posse, to recruit amazing young people, send them off to campuses to make change, and then eventually send them into the world so they become inspirational leaders. Now, I can talk all day about Posse, but I think to really understand what Posse can do for people, it's best to show you rather than just to tell you. Um, so I'm going to play this video that was actually released by ABC News about Posse. And so you can really see in action how this program has affected people's lives. And also just to throw in a little personal touch here, this picture on the right is actually my Posse. Um, this was us when we were seniors in high school and we went on a retreat together and really began a beautiful friendship across all 10 of us. So just a personal plug, but I'm going to share my this video with you all and hopefully you'll feel just as such as I did the first time that I saw it um, and if while I play it if anybody can't hear for any other reason please feel free to put that in the chat so I can adjust the volume Thank you to the person that says they cannot hear it. All right, let me see what I can do here. The video is muted. All righty. So what I can do.
Let's see if this will make any difference. Across the country, the season for both a see if people are able to hear it. This did work. Let's see. I'm going to college road trip. 14 hours. Mother, yeah, should I bring these jars? Yeah, you're gonna need them for all the clothes you're bringing. Across the country, the season for both a bittersweet and joyous rite of passage. A disaster, she's leaving. <laughs> Hi. 17 year old Amaya Munoz putting the finishing touches on her last minute packing before takeoff. I was just looking at baby pictures over there. Big day. Yeah, big day. Very big day, very proud. Meanwhile, across town. Ready? Yes, we are taking Jazz out. Jasmine Kerr is also beginning her journey. Yes, everyone is friendly and nice. From the Bronx, New York, to DePaul University in Greencastle, Indiana, carrying her family's hopes on her shoulders. My older brother, he went to Stony Brook University, and uh, he wasn't successful there. He actually dropped out. He felt isolated in college. Yes. It's just a transition, a culture shock. That whole not having that support unit, the system in place, and the friends to lean on. But Jasmine comes with allies her brother never had. Posse, a scholarship program combining a four-year full tuition grant to some of the country's most prestigious schools, and also comes with a built-in support network. The unique program sends students to college in groups of 10, Posse's, to have each other's back through the college years. Historically, merit has meant high test scores in admissions. And that is problematic because the students in this country who get the highest scores on the SAT, for example, are white and Asian. So to help level the playing field, Deborah Beal started the Posse program. It's exciting to see all of you in here, I hope. Identifying star students through qualities like motivation and just plain grit that she says can't be measured by standardized tests and slowly helping change the demographic landscape at elite colleges across the country. 17,000 young people have been nominated across the United States for this scholarship this year. Only 740 will be selected, matched to one of Posse's 57 partner universities, some of the best in the country. Jasmine's quest began last fall when she walked through these doors for the first round of interviews. It would mean getting like a support system in college, which is one of the hardest times. Another candidate from the Bronx, Christoph Shakur Larman. He's always had to weigh his ambitions with the humble reality. I come from a low income family, so this scholarship will help me push myself to getting into my double majors for engineering and physics. That's what I really want. I really just want to work, work for NASA. We follow Posse in New York as they narrowed down this year's candidates. It involved months of interviews and carefully observed group interactions like this one in an imaginary career at a toy company. After that, do we have it correct? Posse is finding extraordinarily talented young people, kids who might have been missed by traditional admission screens because maybe they didn't go to a great high school, maybe they didn't have the best test score. There are those who will hear that and think, ah, oh, they're watering down. Right. The admissions process. They're right. lowering their standards. You miss so much of a person when you focus solely on test scores and grades. When you look beyond a test score, when you look at the whole person, you see so much that can contribute to an academic environment and a social environment, which college is. We're relying on you. Ninety percent of Posse scholarship recipients graduate college, far above the national average of 53 percent. As the selection process continued in New York, the pressure began mounting. What do you know about round two? It's a one-on-one -on -one interview. Christoph, the NASA hopeful, spends an afternoon prepping with his guidance counselor, and cracks begin Hi. to show. 
God, I so, hate eye contact. My eye, my eye, like, I know you twitching. struggle, and that's why for yeah. I didn't. I know I told you guys to practice on your own. I think you need to practice with someone. I've never had an interview before. After the next round of interviews, he receives disappointing results. Jasmine and Amaya, classmates at a Bronx high school, have been practicing mock interviews on the weekends. Describe your leadership style. <laughs> no, you can't. For Amaya, an aspiring engineer, her first choice, the University of Wisconsin at Madison one of the country's top schools for computer science. But then I was thinking, if I don't get posse, would I still really want to go to Wisconsin by myself without, like, I was like, I can't go there if I don't get posse. Three months after starting the process, finalists from around New York set out on their pilgrimage to downtown Manhattan for their last and deciding interview. I've been waiting weeks to finally go to this interview and see how it's gonna be. After all this, I still could go home empty-handed. Behind closed doors, the finalist audition for what may be their most important roles yet. Yeah. It was nice seeing you again. It was good seeing you. Bye. Talk to me if you find out anything. <laughs> of course, we can say. Later that night, our cameras joined a number of students as they awaited word. Well, the call came. Were you nervous? Were you praying? Were you um, patient? Were I was ner We were nervous. She I was, was crying. I was kind of just shocked. Like I didn't. I didn't even believe it. Honestly, college is a big responsibility, and I wasn't really able to pay it. So this was basically like an answer to prayers. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so very much. <laughs> like, they're all clapping. <laughs> yeah. Jasmine's win, a culmination of her promise she'd made to her father six years ago. She, on a whim, just looked at me one day and said, Daddy, don't worry about school. I'm going to get a full scholarship. And I just said, OK, like, I'll believe it when I say it. Right. Yay! And at that point, I don't know if I was walking on cloud nine, but life just changed at that moment. <laughs> Pretty much with a support group, I think you can do almost anything. So happy, so proud. Jasmine and Amaya, part of a milestone for the Posse Foundation. This year marks a billion dollars in scholarships awarded. Tell me when you get there, please. All right, bye. For Nightline, I'm Byron Pitts in New York. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos. everyone so lots of emotion in that video for sure I remember the first time I watched it oh, I'm sorry. the first time I watched it I was like wow that's amazing but also it was I think it was a little special for me because um the women that were featured in that video were actually the same year that I got posse. Those were the girls that got posse the same year that I did. And I knew them personally um, through the Posse Foundation following. Um, I even know they were doing that interview at the time. So it was pretty cool to see. Um, but amazing people and amazing people also that weren't able to be pictured and followed. So I hope that touched you in a way, in any way, if at all possible. Um, and I did get a couple of comments. I noticed from in my private inbox about if posse is reliant on socioeconomic status if it's reliant on like racial slash ethnic diversity and i will get into that um after we go through the dap process and breaking down those steps but it i just want to put it out there that it is not you do not need to have a particular like meet a certain income requirement to get posse you do not have to be of a racial a particular racial or ethnic background Posse is completely based on positions as a leader and what it is that you bring to the table, not just how much money your parents make, which 
is really all part of the mission to make policy more accessible for all inner city kids. So I just do want to put that out there before I move forward through this here. Okay. So what you saw them beginning to partake in is called the DAP process. And the DAP process stands for DA, um, DAP, but the dynamic assessment process. So posse interviews are structured into these three steps. There is, well, really it's four steps because there's the pre-DAP, DAP one, DAP two, and DAP three. Um, and here you will see what exactly the definition of DAP is. I will also be sharing a link in the chat in just a moment of this image here that really breaks it down so everybody can click on that and follow along as well. But before I drop that um, link into the chat, DAP has proven to be an extremely effective tool for identifying outstanding young leaders um, through a three-part assessment process. So this includes a large and group, a large group and individual interviews and posse staff and partner colleges um, with university administrators will ultimately just select the group of 10 students to receive a posse scholarship for each institution. So for those, for our, whatever university it is that partners with posse first. So for example, my posse partnership school was Wheaton College. That school picks 10 kids from that posse final interview that you witnessed. And those 10 kids become a posse, become a group, and they go to college essentially together through after all of those rounds of interviews. Um, um, all right, apologies. Okay, so this link here, I am going to drop this now into the chat. So I'm gonna have to make this a little smaller just so you can all look through this on your own time. This here is the dynamic assessment process breakdown. And I think it's super helpful to have everybody be able to look at it on your own time while I'm talking, take your time and look through it because this is like the clearest breakdown I think that you can possibly have. And I will get into the nuances of it. Um, but essentially there's pre-DAP, which is your outreach, your large group interviews, your individual interviews, and the finalist interviews. Now, um, I'm gonna start with the pre, which is the recruitment set. So callers, sco callers, excuse me. <laughs> scholars can be nominated from a teacher, representative from a public organization, or a posse alumni. Um, in order to be an eligible high school senior, you must be nominated by someone in the, um, community-based organization or from your public high school. Um, so it's specialized high schools are okay because that's considered public schools. But if you attend a private school, you need to be nominated by someone from a community-based organization um, or posse alumni. Um, you must be in the first term of your senior year in high school in order to, when the interview process starts, that's when you must be in your first term. So, for example, the nominations happen really beginning towards the end of your junior year into your senior year. Interviews begin at the beginning of your senior year. So in this moment right now, if you are a second semester senior, unfortunately, this posse opportunity is not applicable to you because you probably have already determined where you're going to college anyway. Um, but just to put that out there as well, this opportunity begins really the nomination recruitment process begins towards the end of your junior year into the beginning of your senior year. Um, and to be an eligible person, you need to be at towards the end of your junior year, heading into your senior year. So if you're a second semester junior right now, you're perfect, you're in the right place. This is an opportunity that is completely available to you. Um, you have to demonstrate leadership within your high school community or family, demonstrate academic potential, and again, apply on time. Depending on the posse city or program, nominations are expected in the spring and summer before your senior year begins. Um, so you can get, you can find your local posse office information on the posse website as well. But just so you know, juniors that are entering their senior year at this point, you guys are the ones who are eligible for the scholarship program. So that's when recruitment begins. Now. 
I will, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. The Posse Scholarship is neither a minority nor a needs-based scholarship. It's open to students of all backgrounds. So no matter how much or how little or where your family stands on the income spectrum of things, you can apply to Posse no matter what. They are not looking at your financials when they are selecting you to become a scholarship recipient. They are looking at who you are. They are looking at the whole package of what it is you bring to the table. Um, to prep for the interview. So let's say you've been nominated, somebody in your community, somebody at your high school in the for at Forest Hills. If you do attend Forest Hills High School, I know the, um, the people in the college office, they prepare, they nominate people. So let's say one of them has nominated you and you are now preparing for the interview. Every Posse nominee should absolutely do their research about Posse before entering their first interview. Those of you who are here, you're already at a great start. So the reason for this is because they're gonna ask you these types of questions. So you need to ask yourself and be prepared. What leadership style do I have? What are my passions? And what experiences do I have that align with those passions? So if I'm interested in going into the medical field, do I have any experience helping people in need? Do I have any experiences that I can already commit to that shows what my passions are? How do I show care and support towards others? You'll be supporting people as a Posse Scholar, not just going to school and never thinking about Posse again, you will be supporting others and they will be supporting you. So that's a really important question to ask yourself. And do I believe in the Posse mission statement? I see a lot of times, a lot of kids prepare for a Posse interview the same way they would prepare for anybody, any other type of college interview. And I'm here to tell you, that's just not it. It's just not gonna work in the same way. You really need to go in with your authentic self because people who are interviewing you have been interviewing thousands of kids for years and they can tell when you're faking it, but they can tell when you're really being your authentic self. So it is now, flash forward for those of you that are juniors. Now let's say it's the end of summer this year, you're going into senior year, or you have just started your senior year and you're ready to step into your first round interview. This is interview round one. This is where you will be introduced to the Posse world, to the Posse office, which is on Wall Street. Um, you'll participate in that Lego building activity that you saw where you will have a group of kids that they are watching how you communicate the message of the Lego structure that's behind a wall to others. So for example, let's say everybody's here in the middle, and then one student goes out, looks at a stack of Legos, sees, okay, red's on top, comes in and they see how you communicate back and forth. And what they're really looking for is how do you interact with groups and how do you lead in a way that feels except like warm and comfortable with the people around you and what kind of leader you are. Um, and then you'll close that interview with a short essay. So as you see this little guy here, he's on the floor, writing his paper, that was me. He just spread out in the office and everybody writes their essays. You drop it in a bin, you go home. And that's the conclusion of your first round interview. Now, some of my tips for the first round. This is something that's really important. Making a strong impression is really important in any college interview, but something that is true to you. So if you're not always the person to like stand up and like lead a group all the time, and that's okay. You don't have to be that way as long as you're being a leader in your own way. So a leader might be someone who's supporting others. A leader might be somebody who is better at suggesting ideas and guiding the group more so behind the scenes. If that's who you are too, be true to yourself. Um, being friendly and engaging in conversations. And this doesn't just mean like in a way that feels superficial. superficial. They are looking for how you connect with people. And by being friendly and engaging in authentic conversation, the interviewers will see that and they'll see that you're willing to support and connect with new people that you may not know, which is really important. Uh -huh. Act normal, just be yourself. It sounds crazy, college interviews. Well, why would I wanna be myself? Just be yourself, I promise it'll work. Um, you might be asked to do certain activities that seem, seem silly to you, um, but remember that those activities are done to help the community get to know you better. So when you go in, they might tell you walk around like an octopus, but you're like, what? That makes no sense. 
but they're doing those things to push you out of your comfort zone to see how you react and see how quickly you're able to adapt and embrace change. Um, like I said, be ready to write a short essay on why you should be selected as a scholar. Um, when I interviewed back in the day, we had the option to choose a prompt. Um, so there was like multiple prompts and you could just pick one and which one ever felt the most true to you and you wrote what you were thinking. Um, important, but a technical thing when you go into that first round, you should know your GPA, your SAT or ACT scores if you have those um, and your class rank to fill out the data sheet. Your class rank is how your academic standing compares to the rest of your um, class at the moment. And that's just for a technical um, data sheet. You have to fill that out when you come in. And lastly, don't mind the people walking around taking notes in the first round of news. It's a lot of kids and a lot of people walking around with clipboards and you're like, why are they staring at me? Um, they're just there to watch and assess how you're doing <laughs> and say, just don't mind them. All right, you've made it to round two. Welcome. You've got it past the first round, which can be very intimidating because there are a lot of people in that first round. There's probably about in your one interview alone, and mind you, there's multiple, there's like probably like 10 to 12. In your interview alone, there's probably like 60 to 70 kids there. So you've made it pretty, pretty far now. You've made it to round two. You're about two steps way into the process. This is the semifinalist round. So semifinalists must bring a questionnaire along with an object that they feel that represents them. So you have to fill out a questionnaire, come and prepare to bring that, and an object that feels close to you. So you can bring a writing sample. If you want to bring your SAT score, you want to bring your official transcripts. Well, I'm sorry. You need to bring something that's personal to you. You need to bring a writing sample and you need to bring your SAT official rest transcripts and a resume. Um, not that if you want, you have to bring those things. Um, and this is going to be a one-to-one -one or sometimes a two-to-one interview, really mostly a one-to-one. -one. I only say sometimes a two-to-one because when I interviewed, I had an interviewer and my interviewer was also happened to be reserved. So there were two people in my room, but you will have a one-to-one -one more than likely. Um, and this is your time to really open up. I spoke about some really deep things going on in my life at the time. And I shared personally, I was, um, I expressed myself a lot through like my journals and my writing. And I shared those journals with the interviewers and I got really deep and I got really personal. And I think it really helped me in the long run because they really got to see who I was and why I was who I was, which I think is really important in your round two. So some tips for that round, dress appropriately. You are going to an interview. You do wanna dress, they always say dress for the job you want, not the job you have. Um, so whatever that feels like for you, what you feel would be like somewhat professional attire. It doesn't have to be the fanciest thing off the rack, but dress appropriately. Um, analyze each school thoroughly, know the schools on the posse list. I believe there's over 13 schools now for Posse New York. Look at them. Your, the committee will ask you and will test your knowledge on the top three choices. You don't need to know every single thing about the school, but you should know what programs are there and why you want to choose your top three choices. When you go into the second round, um, you will have to look at the, um, you will have to go in with your top five choices and those top five choices, they're gonna ask you why that you picked those. So you should have reasons and concrete reasons why you like those schools, they'll be the right fit for you. Um, I always say to link your explanations to your passions. So don't just say that you like a school because they have a cool laboratory. Like why does the laboratory intrigue you? Do you wanna bring research into the school? Is there something that you're really passionate about that the school has a program for? Do you wanna start a program at the school because of the location it is? things like that, you should link explanations to your to your passions. Lastly, as you saw in the video, the girls were practicing mock interviews um, and to hold on to your voice while you do that. So don't, you don't wanna just reiterate what a college officer, a college, um, a college board person from your school is saying, be authentic to your voice. Um, think about extracurricular activities that mean a lot to you, your passion, your life, who inspires you and be prepared for anything, like random questions. Like, what did you eat for lunch today? Things like that. You'll be surprised how deep they really just wanna to get to know you and know who you are. And lastly, keep calm and avoid looking nervous. Easier said than done.
but you know you're, they're there to just know you and if you go in with I'm going to go in and share a piece of myself today you'll feel a lot less nervous I promise all right okay last one this is round three this happens generally between beginning of December to the end of December of your first semester of senior year Posse is an early decision school so once you're selected you will fill out the application of the school that has been chosen from your top three choices so this in this that second interview after you list your top three choices following that interview if you make it to DAP three top DAP round three which you see here you will be matched to a school from your top three choices you do not get to pick the exact school that you will that you could potentially be applying to you have to pick your top three and they will match you based on your personality and what they feel would be the best fit. Now this scares a lot of people sometimes, but you do have a great list of schools to pick from and you do have a say in which schools you wanna put in your top three. They will pick one from your top three and it will likely be the best fit for you. Mine certainly was. Um, and when you agree to go into that DAP round three, you are agreeing that if you get that scholarship that day, you will be attending that school. So agreeing to DAP round three is agreeing to an early decision if you get it. Um, that's a very important point. So let's say you get past round two and you're saying, okay, I wanna go to round three. When you say you wanna go to round three, you're saying, I wanna, get, I wanna go to that school if I get that scholarship. Um, Finalists will also be asked to write a personal statement along with the required documents and a resume. So start building your resume now, it will help you. And you be prepared that you're going to write personal statements in addition to the school's um, normal college application. Um, there will be a group interview with 21 to 22 students. So you start off with about 75 kids. You have a one-on-one, -on -one then now round three is only 21 to maybe maximum 22 students so when you get into that round three you're going to look around at your peers and you're going to say wow half of these kids could be my posse which means you will be doing school life great learning with half of the people in that room if you get that scholarship at that point which is a really cool thing to see where you start to where you grow into my tips for the third round, um, this is almost, at least for me personally, felt like the most intense part of the process because while it can be really inspirational looking around like half of us are gonna get it, I can sometimes be a self-doubter and be like, oh my goodness, half of us aren't, right? But class is always full. So if you be yourself, there will be college representatives from the school that you've been matched to walking around, observing you, talking to you and they've been doing this for a long time especially like schools that have been partnered with posse for a long time they can tell when you're not being authentic because they've been around the block they know what is going on um the biggest thing from the third round that i think a lot of people don't really think about very often but it's don't be afraid to talk with the other interviewees like i said when you're sitting in that room there's only 20 of you in that third round half of them will become your posse and they're going to be looking to see who you can get along with. Can you step out of your comfort zone and reach out to people and talk with them, become friendly, because half of them will be going to the school and half of them will become your posse. Um, and lastly, most importantly, don't be afraid to be vulnerable. At that point, when you're in the third round interview, you already know you're awesome. You already know you've defied so many statistics at that point to get into that room. You're amazing, you're awesome. Just go in there, be yourself and be vulnerable. And I mean vulnerable. Don't be afraid to share who you are because that's what they really want to see. And they really want to hear what your opinions are. So don't be scared. So let's say it's all said and done. So now it's about early December, your first semester senior year. You just finished your round, last round interview. You're feeling good. You will find out luckily very 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 quickly whether you got posse or not um once you officially become a posse scholar scholar you'll begin something that's called pct which is considered pre-collegiate training that requires you to attend meetings once a week with your trainer or posse 
um, I put in here, don't worry, it's not so bad. Uh, once a week feels like a lot when you're a senior in high school and you're like, oh, I got into college already. I'm tired. I don't know if I want to do another thing, but I promise you it's a great opportunity to get to know your peers and you do learn a lot of skills that not necessarily just academic skills, but like connected, like how to be interconnected with people and how to have more difficult conversations in a space that feels more small and intimate and how to really dive in deep with people. It becomes a really valuable experience that will then project you to start off successfully in your first year of college. Um, and lastly, obligations. Obligations, everything comes with obligations in this world and posse is no different. When you get the posse and they grant you this beautiful gift of a full scholarship, you will have to meet weekly with your posse and your posse mentor once a week for the first two years. Now, what this means is that you will have a meeting one week with your posse, entire posse, all 10 of you plus your mentor, and the mentor will always be a faculty member at the school. You'll meet, you'll play games, you'll get to know each other, and you'll support each other in whatever it is at the time. Sometimes you're just struggling emotionally and you need someone to hear you out. That's what your posse is for. You'll meet with them once a week. And then once, I believe it's every two weeks, you will meet, no, it's once every week, you will meet with your mentor on a one-on-one. -on -one. So you'll get to just meet with your mentor. And for me, honestly, they were mostly therapy-like sessions, just airing out the stresses and getting the supports that I could need for my mentor. He would supply me with great resources to help me with whatever problem was going on at the time. Um, and it was really helpful. And you only have to do that for the first two years. Um, after your first two years, a lot of kids go abroad their junior year of college, like I did. So after that, then you're, you're good. You just meet your posse how you, when you want, how you like, and they really become your friends. So you wanna see them anyway. Um, and then you're not contractually obligated to, but it's still great. Okay, I did so much talking. And I know we're getting very close to the end here, but I do want to open up the floor. I will hang back for just an extra like three minutes or so. Give us like a whole total of five minutes for questions. If you would like to drop them into the chat and as they're coming in, I'll answer with what I can. Um, again, like the meeting says here, ask me anything. If there's something that was unclear or if there's anything that you just want to ask, curiosity is all welcome in here. I'll leave the chat open right now. So feel free to type them in and be here ready to ask. That means ready to answer all of your questions. Also, if you would like to unmute and ask a question, that would be great. I see one here. Are there several organizations like Posse or is this very unique? So Posse is a very unique scholarship opportunity because they do look at your entire package. So they look, and I know a lot of colleges say they look at your extracurriculars, but they look more about like how you grew up and who you are. And what I mean by that is how you overcome personal challenges into your life. And they find that through the DAP process and the interview process. So if you've shown a lot of personal perseverance through things, you don't get that in a traditional college application, but you will get that in Posse. Um, as far as like a full tuition 10, like you get to go to college with other people to support you. There's no other program that exists that is like that, at least as far as my knowledge goes. Um, yeah, whatever. Okay, the 13 schools affiliated with Posse, they're, I can't name all 13 of them off the top of my head, but they're all a mix of, they're all private schools and they're all out of state. So no Posse school will be in state uh, unless it's like, there's one that's very, very far up state, but they're all like, you would have to live away from home in order to attend a Posse school. So some examples are, Franklin and Marshall, DePaul, Wheaton, um, Vanderbilt is a really big one. It's one that's a very popular option. A lot of kids want to go to Vanderbilt, which is, again, further out. But they are all also available 
to you on the Posse website. So if you look up Posse NYC, you will be able to just see the full list of all the schools that are there that are associated with Posse New York. I will say when you look up the list of schools there, make sure you look up Posse NYC because there's Posse Chicago and there's Posse, I think, LA now. So they have different affiliate schools. Make sure that you're looking up Posse NYC. This is a teacher technique right now. This is called making space. So I'm making space to allow people to flow in and flow out with their questions if you like, if you have any. You can also private message me if you don't wanna put it in the big group as well. I do want to say I want to thank you all for being here tonight. I know it's a little later in the evening and I really appreciate that you all are here and that you're interested in this great opportunity. Um, I found it to be really helpful for myself and I am just a really big advocate for anybody who is pursuing this opportunity and I think Posse is a great organization that looks for amazing kids that are doing great things and not just what's on paper, but really what's in your minds and in your hearts. And I know that you're, the fact that you're even all here is showing that you really care. So I thank you all so much for being here. If there are no more questions, I'll leave it, the Zoom open for another minute if anybody wants to unmute. But that is the information I have to share. If you have any further questions, Feel, feel, please feel free to reach out through Queller and I will share my knowledge as I can. And thank you so much. Thank you for those of you in the chat. All right, you all have a great night. Again, I'll hang back until it's 8.05, just in case anybody wants to ask any questions. But if you don't have any questions, you can hop off and have a great evening. Please feel free to look at the link I shared that breaks down the interview process and check out the Posse website. Um, so you can explore the opportunity. Good luck to everybody. All right, everybody. Okay, well, thank you all so much and have a great night. Thank you so much for coming.